Greetings, Duelist. Welcome to the Metaphys Archetype Breakdown. The deck profile will be available in the description box below, along with timestamps to help you navigate. Before we dive into the details, let us first familiarize ourselves with the cards in the archetype so we know what we're working with. Don't worry, you won't need to remember their effects, just knowing these cards exist is enough. We'll go over them again later on. Metaphys is an archetype composed of light worm monsters. There are seven main deck monsters and one synchro. From descending order of level, we have Executor at level 10, Tyrant Dragon and Nephthys both at level 8, Daedalus and Armed Dragon at level 7, our Synchro Monster Metaphys Horus at level 6, our Tuna Ragnarok at level 4, and finally, our Pendulum Monster Decoy Dragon at level 2. In addition to the monsters, we also have two spells and two traps. The Field Spell Metaphys Factor, the Continuous Spell Asim Metaphys, the Normal Trap Metaphys Ascension, and the Continuous Spell Metaphys Dimension. Now we know what cards we have, but what is the purpose of the deck, and how do we use the cards to achieve it? Or in other words, what is the goal? The goal of Metaphys is simple. Banish. Your cards, your opponent's cards, everything. Why banish your own cards? Well, because if these three cards are banished, during the next standby phase they can shuffle themselves back into the deck to activate their effects. That means if they were banished during your turn, they activate during your opponent's standby phase, and vice versa. Nephthys can add a Metaphys card except itself from your deck to your hand, and Tyrant Dragon can special summon a Metaphys monster from your hand. More often than not, it will be Daedalus. If Daedalus is special summoned by the effect of a Metaphys monster, you can banish all face-up special summon monsters on the field. The reason Metaphys is so good is because Daedalus is a relatively easy to set up one card non-targeting mass monster removal. Against opponents that have dedicated many resources to summoning powerful monsters, Daedalus is able to immediately gain you significant advantage. Daedalus, as mentioned before, also has an effect in the Banished Zone. It shuffles itself into the deck to banish another Metaphys card from your deck, and acts as an intermediary for Nephthys and Tyrant Dragon setting up your Bandit Zone for the following turn. Nephthys and Tyrant Dragon also have effects when they're special summoned by the effect of a Metaphys monster. Nephthys can banish all set spell and traps on the field, and Tyrant Dragon becomes unaffected by trap effects and gains an additional attack if it attacks an opponent's monster. Although Nephthys' effect is similar to Daedalus's, the reason is not as impactful as because most decks lean towards summoning strong monsters than setting up back row. Also, back row are individual cards, while strong monsters may take multiple cards to summon, so removing the large monsters causes a slightly larger difference in advantage. Nephthys' role in the deck is to remove any back row that isn't negation, or force your opponent to negate Nephthys in order to save their other spell and traps, giving more safety to your other Metaphys monsters. This is particularly useful against cards that aren't chainable, like Battle Traps for instance. As for Tyrant Dragon, Due to the battle phase oriented second effect, I believe its protection against trap effects is intended to make it a more effective beat stick. These three cards are what the majority of the deck is centered around, but there are many more cards in the archetype and their interactions to go over. So let's talk about the synergy. Let's start with Ragnarok. Ragnarok does the two things that we want. Banish cards from our deck, and special summon a Metaphys monster by the effect of a Metaphys monster. However, in order to summon a monster, Ragnarok must inflict battle damage. To help Ragnarok do so, we have Asa Metaphys, which can reduce the attack and defense of an opponent's monster by 500. If Ragnarok banishes the maximum number of Metaphys cards by its effect, it can reach a peak of 2400 attack. Taking into account the attack reduction by Asa Metaphys, this makes any monster with an attack less than 2900 potentially vulnerable to a Ragnarok attack. Although that's the best case scenario, 
The point is, if your opponent leaves out a vulnerable monster that Ragnarok can attack over, the rest of their field can be dealt with immediately with a Daedalus. Of course, depending on the situation, a Nephthys or Tyrant Dragon could be summoned as well. It also helps Tyrant Dragon and Daedalus attack over some monsters that are at or over 3k. As the Metaphys' draw effect by banishing a Metaphys card in our hand also helps set up our goal of two banished Metaphys monsters, as well as being reliable with draw power. Decoy Dragon can banish itself from either the Pendulum or Monster Zone to special summon a Metaphys monster that is either banished or in the graveyard. It works well with Asimetaphys' second effect to change the position of all face-up non-Metaphys monsters on the field to prevent you from taking attacks during your opponent's turn. Also, as Nephthys is unable to search itself, being summoned from the Banish Zone is one of the easier methods of activating Nephthys' effect. Being able to special summon itself back to your field also means you only need to search Ragnarok in order to special summon a Metaphys Horus. A quick note for Decoy Dragon, be wary when you use its effect from your Pendulum Zone. None of the large Metaphys monsters will get their effects because Decoy Dragon is using its Pendulum effect to summon them, not its monster effect. The only other way to search Nephthys is with Metaphys Ascension. Metaphys Ascension can be banished with As a Metaphys during your turn to add it, or any other Metaphys card from your deck to your hand, or by a Daedalus in the standby phase. Ascension's other effect to banish a Metaphys card works well with As a Metaphys' effect during your opponent's turn to prevent attacks, and also leaves a monster in the graveyard that Decoy Dragon can potentially summon. Safety comes in the form of an unable to respond clause attached to their field spell Metaphys Factor, which provides some degree of protection for our effects, the majority of which are monster effects. The effect of normal summon a Metaphys monster from our hand gives our large monsters something to do if we draw them, but we probably won't use this effect that often. Dimension is our removal and can happen whenever we banish a Metaphys card, so anytime Ragnarok, Daedalus, As a Metaphys, or Decoy Dragon happen. It can also special summon a Metaphys monster, but it's inadvisable to special summon the big ones, because they only get their effects when they're special summoned by the effect of a Metaphys monster and not a spell or trap. This means the two targets are going to be Ragnarok and Decoy Dragon. Ragnarok gets its effect whenever it's special summoned, so it combos well. Special summoning Ragnarok and using its effect to banish your cards, and also one of your opponents via Dimension. Decoy Dragon can be summoned if you have one banished and need it on your field. Things don't always go according to plan though. This archetype also has its fair share of issues. We only have three Ragnarok, and we're not guaranteed to open with it. Even if we have Ragnarok, it's only able to banish three cards. There are only nine main targets in the deck, and we need two of them banished to do anything which means we either need to get really lucky, or have Ragnarok and as a Metaphys to be able to do anything meaningful. There are also issues with banishing reliably later in the game. Decoy Dragon doesn't protect against anything except battle, not even itself. So any type of removal leaves our Decoy Dragon that we likely only have one of, since it can only special summon itself once per turn, and by our extension our field, in deep trouble. Metaphys is reliant on Decoy Dragon plus Daedalus or Asa Metaphys or Metaphys Dimension to survive the battle phase against decks with high monster and or damage output. A special mention for linked monsters, as Asa Metaphys is unable to turn them into defense position, so decks like Crusadia or a monster like Boral Sword Dragon are especially problematic. Metaphys can't get rid of face down special summon monsters or face up spell and traps reliably due to the limitations of Daedalus and Nephthys. For all other removal, we are dependent on Metaphys Dimension, which is slow. Metaphys has no monster main deck or extra deck that is larger than 3k. Metaphys's first course of action versus large monsters is usually to either remove it with Daedalus or to weaken it incrementally with As a Metaphys. However, neither method works versus monsters that are unaffected by card effects. Monsters such as Raid Raptor Ultimate Falcon, Geomethic Final Sigma, Apocalyphor Towers, Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Super Dora, and Super Quantum Mech King Great Magnus are all immovable roadblocks in our path to victory. Special mention for Dark Magician, as Eternal Soul plus Dark Magician the Dragon Knight combine for a 3k monster that is unaffected by card effects, while Eternal Soul is face up on the field, which itself is unable to be targeted or destroyed by card effects due to Dragon Knight's effect. So, what cards do you use to compensate for these weaknesses? 
let's take a look at the deck. The deck is centered around Necroface. Why Necroface? Well, as opposed to Ragnarok, Necroface banishes five cards from the top of the deck instead of three, giving us a slightly better chance of banishing the cards we need to. In the unlikely event that we banish it by Ragnarok's effect, we have effectively banished eight cards, or seven if you discount Necroface itself. To banish Necroface, I've included the one gold sarcophagus that I'm allowed, but one card does not a deck make, I'm aware which is why I also have three left arm offering. For Metaphys, a deck that needs things banished, being able to play left arm offering which is one of the best normal spells in the game is a godsend. With it, we are able to search any spell from our deck with the small cost of banishing all other cards in our hand, at least two, and not being able to set any cards during that turn. You might think you mind this cost, but trust me, for what it's worth, you don't mind. This can search out our gold sarcophagus and kinda gives us four, Sort of. So we have left arm offering gold sarcophagus and necroface. If we have metaphys monsters that we want banished in the hand, then left arm offering can banish them to search a gold sarcophagus, which can banish necroface, giving us a good chance of banishing more metaphys monsters that we need to set up plays with. Having a necroface banished with gold sarcophagus also gives us a last ditch out versus large monsters that aren't affected by our asymmetaphys or dimension. If enough cards are banished, a normal summon Necroface might be able to attack over them. Playing Necroface also allows us the option to play Aloof Lupine. Lupine helps us achieve the goal of banishing two Metaphys monsters, which is already fantastic, but having Necroface means we can banish even more cards. Aloof Lupine does not have the restriction of banishing monsters with different names. You can banish two Daedalus or two Necroface. That's all fine. However, with Necroface as the only two zombies in the deck means that if one of them gets banished by something else, then Lupine is no longer able to banish the other one from the deck. However, if we include Shirinui's Spirit Master, then we can have an additional two zombie targets, which keeps Aloof Lupine into Necroface live until three of the four cards are banished. Having Spirit Master also gives us a way to destroy faceless spell and traps or monsters faster than Metaphys Dimension, which is very useful especially because I can have them from Gold Sarcophagus as well. The other spell I've decided to main deck is Raigeki. I'm personally against playing generic cards that do nothing for the archetype it's being played in, but it does make a bit more sense in terms of the deck design as a whole. Some indiscriminate destruction is just what we need. Metaphys can sometimes have difficulty going second against decks that are decided to set up a difficult field to get around. However, not all of the setups are impervious to Raigeki. At worst, it will force one negation out of your opponent, which could be the difference between you being able to play or not. As you'll have noticed, I have three of almost everything in the main deck that does not have a number restriction. The reason Dimension and Factor are at two is because they stay on the field after activation. And Metaphys doesn't have a way to put spell and traps back into the deck, unlike the monsters, so having two keeps the ability to search them until we need them most of the time. The only reason we have three Asymmetaphys is because it's more likely to be immediately impactful during our turn, as well as being draw power and necessary banish power. It's advisable to play as many Metaphys cards as possible in any Metaphys deck with three Ragnarok, to give it the highest chance of having a high attack. You'll also notice that I have three Card of Sanctity. Similar to Left Arm Offering, we don't mind our cards being banished at all. The main reason it's in there is to prevent us from bricking game one. Although it seems like a bad idea, the number of times I've been saved by that card is embarrassing. Also, it's an old card, and it's fun, so there. The only extra deck Metaphys monster Metaphys Horus will play two of, because one isn't enough, and if you've summoned Metaphys Horus three times in a game, you probably already won ages ago. Unfortunately, our opponent chooses the monster they give to us, but if they choose a monster with a level, we can overlay Horus and their monster to make Damper Vampire Sheridan which is hilarious. Gives us even more removal. Just the fact that we can summon this is already too funny. The only way it could be funnier is if we slapped a Thunder Charger on top of it. Geomathmic Final Sigma is a great card that can be summoned whenever our opponent gives Ragnarok an opening. Summoning Tyrant Dragon or Nephthys gives us an easy level 12 synchro into this beast which just wins against some decks. Anything that doesn't have large monsters or kaijus. The reason it's good is because it's unaffected by our own card effects as well 
which means we can still use Azimuthus and summon Daedalus as we please while this is on the field. That's about all the necessary cards in the deck, the rest is more or less up to you. One thing that the deck kinda struggles against is Secret Village, currently being played in some variants of Altergeist. I didn't want this deck to have this weakness, so I put in Clara and Rushka. We have a lot of monsters that can be normal summoned, and making this allows us to use spells while Secret Village is on the field, so it's very worthwhile, as sometimes the deck can become dependent on the Left Arm Offering or Card of Sanctity, for example, to unbrick. If Metaphys Factor is already on the field, a large Metaphys monster can also be normal summoned and turned into her. Hip Hoshi Nengen is just a nice booster that pushes our large Metaphys monsters over the 3k threshold, allowing them to attack over some monsters. Also by using Metaphys monsters as material, we can put them into the graveyard for Decoy Dragon. Shaman of the Ten is the same deal. Put the materials in the graveyard for Decoy Dragon, but also its effect is really good for bringing back Ragnarok, which we want to see more of. It doesn't benefit the deck any more than that, and it really should be played in another variant, but it's a very good card, so I'm playing it for now. Angel of Zira. There's no real reliable way to summon it, but it gives us another way to attack over larger monsters, and can be a pain with Dimensional Fissure on the field. Aegeon the Sea Castrum. Sometimes we're able to make a rank 8. I promise. They just seem like the best one. It can continuously diminish your opponent's extra deck and poses a very legitimate threat to any decks that are fusion or exceeds or synchro based. Barricade Borg Blocker is just a good card. Able to protect and retrieve our important continuous and field spells like Magical Midbreaker Field and Soul Absorption and Dimensional Fissure. Gasha Dokuro is being played because I wanted to use Tatsu Necro. Not needed, wanted. With it, Tatsu Necro can Synchro Summon for a level 11 zombie monster using Tyrant Dragon or Nephthys from the hand. The reason this is kind of important is because again, some decks that have a lot of negation, but don't prevent special summoning like versus the Cyber Dragon Infinity or Herald for example, Tatsu Necro's Synchro Summon doesn't start a chain. Even though the most boring, straightforward, and reliable method would be of course, Kaijus. We have Squire Saga. One, because it's cute, and also because Tatsu can banish the Necroface or a Spirit Master in her hand, or our Lupine if we're really struggling. Sadly, there's no level 10 generic zombie monster that we can summon yet, but it will be a consideration if such a card is made. Instead of simply citing negation like a sensible person would, I tried instead to augment the cards that Metaphys already has. The only negation that Metaphys has currently is Horus. So the only way to summon Horus during your opponent's turn is to have a level 4 monster in the field and a Hopier squad in your hand. But what if we've no level 4 monster? Decoy Dragon works just as well, being able to make a Herald of the Arclight, which can also negate one effect. The reason we need effect negation is for non-targeted removal that Midbreaker Field doesn't help us against. As for the side deck, this clearly isn't a side deck, but as for the side deck, the first issue to address for any deck that doesn't have an out to burn is to find one. For a deck that banishes a lot, Soul Absorption gives us more than enough life points to outlive the burn. It will still lose to Chain Burn that open well going second, but isn't that the same for everyone? Decoy Dragon protects us from battle, and this card protects us from almost everything else. It can't do much against removal that doesn't target like Trishula or Tiramisu, but any destruction or targeting otherwise is handled by this field card. Being limited isn't super bad, since we have the ability to search it via left arm offering. Dimensional Fissure is very powerful against just about anything, so why not main it? I had it main for a while, but I discovered that it didn't really do much on its own unless I used it turn 1. Raigeki from me was just more safer and a bit more effective. Yes, Dimensional Fissure can be a very large annoyance for many decks, but will very rarely be the deciding factor game 1. Bunnies! So, as I mentioned before, Metaphys has a tough time against large monsters. Especially those that are unaffected by our card effects, like the one on Daedalus, which is our go-to for monster removal. However, most of those cards aren't protected by battle, which leaves us the option of running it over. But what with? I'm using Gran but you should probably use literally anything else. I'm stubborn because Ragnarok in Decoy Dragon is a level 6 synchro, and I'm playing 3 left arm offering, which lets me search any spell I want. So I wanted to use Scroll of Bewitchment to change Ragnarok to a fire type tuner, which lets us summon Horse Prince <laughs> to summon Grand Majuda Iza. I just think it'd be a waste not to play it. 
there are the options, of course. If you choose to use left arm offering as an out, Moon Mirror Shield can be searched to make any of your monsters bigger than the one you're trying to run over. It's one of the best equipped spells in the game for a reason. Of note, it can give Ragnarok and Tyrant Dragon their damage dealing and battle effects respectively. Tyrant Dragon doesn't really benefit that much, but it does get another attack. Ragnarok doesn't need to do a lot of damage, but guaranteed damage means it can nuke the field with Nephthys or Daedalus. Also, the shield comes back. Isn't that nice? Another spell you can choose to search is Infected Mail. It doesn't let you attack over the large monster, but it lets you attack past it, which is the next best thing I guess. Gives Ragnarok its effect, and you might be able to cheese your opponent with a large necroface, but the issue is that we don't really have a lot of level 4 monsters. Might be a different story if we were playing Chaos Zone, or Legacy of the Duelist, however. If you choose to ignore those large monsters, another way to do it is with DD Dynamite. One of these probably won't be enough to win you the game, but they can be searched with Trap Trick if you decide to play it. Trap Trick can be used to search Metaphys Ascension. Metaphys Ascension is currently the only normal trap in the game that gains an effect when banished as a cost by Trap Trick. The restriction on activating one effective Ascension per turn still applies, but it isn't a bad option at all. One more thing for us to consider. If we run into Imperial Iron Wall, we will most certainly lose if we don't do something about it. It doesn't matter which form of spell or trap destruction you choose, but one of the spells, except Cosmic Cyclone, is probably preferable. MST is a consideration as it's no cost, so it can be used immediately after you sacrifice your entire hand to search it with left arm. You know, against the decks that don't have Iron Wall. There's nothing specific that Anti-Spell Fragrance is for, but it does give Nephthys something to do against spell-heavy decks, forcing them to set, giving you an opportunity to remove them. So Release could be played against decks that rely on having certain things in the graveyard, Point is, there's a bunch of cards you can choose to play with Metaphys. Whatever you use is totally up to you. Metaphys, or at least this version of it, prefers to go second. Reason being, it's more oriented towards removal than prevention. We can't remove anything unless our opponent has put something on the board. Overall, the simple yet effective removal that Metaphys possesses is designed to create a discrepancy in card advantage between you and your opponent. In an ideal situation, your opponent uses more cards than you to protect themselves until they're no longer able to do so, at which point Metaphys is free to remove significant chunks of their field, allowing you to attack their life points. Due to the nature of the cards, it's always good to think a turn ahead to what you need on your field, what you need banished, and what you need in your hand in case things get ugly. Of course, most of the time you will be putting the large Metaphys monsters in the banished zone, but sometimes it might be necessary to banish a Ragnarok or Decoy Dragon with your Daedalus or Ascension, depending on your situation. Remember, just because you can doesn't mean you should. You don't always need to activate a Daedalus or Nephthys in the banished zone. Being banished means they're potential targets for a decoy dragon on your field, something that your opponent will have to be wary of, especially Nephthys, which is criminally difficult to search. If you need to summon a Ragnarok during your opponent's standby phase, do it after you've used the effects of all other Metaphys monsters in the banished zone first, so Ragnarok has a higher chance of banishing more Metaphys cards. As a Metaphys is mandatory. This means you don't really get to tell it to not happen. Not always a bad thing, but it's important to remember that if you need the position switching effect during your opponent's turn, you may need to decide to not activate your banished Daedalus, as when it banishes a Metaphys card from your deck, it will activate Asymmetaphys. Only keep odd numbers of Asymmetaphys if you want the position switching effect. Two means the monsters will go back to their original positions. That just about does it for the essentials, so let's talk about the possibilities. The following is speculation without testing and is unfortunately quite vague. I have put some thought into the potential for other ways to build Metaphys, but I haven't gotten around to making the decks myself just yet. If any of these ideas appeal to you, you could try building it yourself, or even design your own variant. I'd love to see what you come up with. Let's talk pure, unadulterated Metaphys. Kind of. With this version of the deck, we can focus on using Crossbreed to its fullest potential. But just Metaphys isn't enough. 
We don't ever want crossbreed to brick, so we're going to play more Lightworms. Of note, we have Metotron, which gives us access to previously inaccessible options in the extra deck, as well as being a strong monster in its own right. Chiwen for Synchro Summoning, and Tenyu Spirit Ashna for either a first turn Xyz or a Synchro. It's also very easy to play Waterfall of Dragon Souls in this deck, which is superb draw power, and also gives us the option to search in Ephthys. Unsurprisingly, two Worm archetypes work well together. Tenyi gives support to vanilla cards, so it makes our Arm Dragon much more useful. I haven't figured out exactly how to slap them together, but Vessel and Celestial Illusions gives us the ability to set up a graveyard and also add worms like Ragnarok and Decoy Dragon to our hand, which I think is very important. Not to mention the Counter Trap, which actually gives us something to do on our first turn. If we have Light Swarns to mill, that means our Executor becomes live much, much faster. Being able to choose what cards to banish from our graveyard also means that we are able to play the deck in a more precise manner. Lightsworn brings its own banish power in the form of March of the Dark Brigade, which isn't bad at all. Celestia the Field Spell gives all of our Metaphys monsters a little boost, as well as being a means of banishing Metaphys monsters from the grave, and crucially, a method to destroy spell and trap cards that's not a monster effect. While you're at it, why not throw a Freed the Brave Wanderer in there? He gets lonely. Metaphys doesn't have any negation going first, it's rather weak in terms of setup. Invoked has good ol' Megaba to simultaneously banish a Metaphys card while also giving you negation. If you banish a Nephthys, you can also choose to add a spell or trap to your hand as Megaba food. The fusions are prone to being banished by Daedalus, but Omega Summon can bring them back. That's it! The end of the video! You made it! Thank you so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. I hope this video has helped further your understanding of one of my favorite archetypes, or at least given you something to think about. The information I have is only as good as I am, so it's far from perfect, and I'm continuously learning about Metaphys and the game as a whole. I encourage you to try the cards for yourself, see what you think, have some fun! If you still have any questions, thoughts, or suggestions, let me know in the comments, and I'll see you there. Thank you, Duelist. Until next time.